This is Physics 2211, Lab 1 on Constant Velocity. For this lab, we were instructed to observe the motion of some object that is moving at constant velocity without changing direction. The purpose of the lab was to create a position versus time graph for the observed motion and then create a computational model in order to produce a position versus time graph of the model motion. In the end, we were supposed to compare the two lines produced by the position versus time graphs for the observed and model motions. For my model, I used a tennis ball and I rolled it across the table. The tennis ball was rolled in the positive x direction across the table, which you will see in the upcoming slides. As a result, the computational model had a greater final position than the experimental model. In this lab, we needed to use Newton's second law. Because of this equation, we can create the updated velocity equation to find the final velocity. I found the initial velocity by taking two positions and then dividing them by the change in time. We can conclude, based on the formula, that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity and therefore constant. This means that the system has a net force of zero. For this model, I chose the tennis ball to be rolling in the positive x direction, moving towards the right. Therefore, the negative x direction went to the left. The tennis ball is the system, and the table and everything else around it is the surroundings. The tennis ball moves towards the right in the positive x direction. To set this model up, I changed the startup code by observing the following data on the text screen above. The start time was 0 seconds. The initial position vector was negative 0 0.00003812, comma 0, comma 0 meters. The change in time that I used was 0 0.033 seconds, and the change in the x position was 0 0.029 meters. And using the velocity formula, the initial velocity vector was 0 0.884, comma 0, comma 0 meters per second. In addition, the time of the last observation was 1.5 seconds. Here, you can see where I made the changes in the GlowScript code to run the correct program. First, I plugged in the average mass of the type of tennis ball I used. Then, I replaced the given initial position and velocity with the numbers taken from the experimental model described before. Finally, I changed the duration of the time at the beginning of the while loop to be 1.5 seconds and replace the given net force with a net force of zero so that the model would move with constant velocity. Shown here are the results from the GlowScript program once the previously explained changes were made and the correct program was run. Here are the results of the experimental model shown with the black line and the computational model, shown with the red line. Because the initial position and velocity for the computational model was taken from the experimental model data, you can see that in the beginning, the position lines up perfectly. However, as time goes on, the position of the computational model becomes greater than the position of the experimental model. This is because in the computational model, Friction from the table and other forces, such as drag, are not taken into account. However, in the experimental model, these other forces are acting on the tennis ball, causing it to not move as far as the computational model. If I was to flip the axis of the model, then the graph would look similar to the original graph, except the lines would be reflected over the x-axis. Still, the computational model would have moved to a further position than the experimental model. Still, the difference is that the position is now in the negative x direction instead of the positive x direction. Though the net force was equal to zero, it is not possible to tell how many pushes or pulls there are on the ball. We know that there are other forces acting on the ball, such as friction or gravity. However, Newton's second law does not tell you how many interactions there are in any given situation. It only tells us that if the interactions all add up to zero, then the object must move at constant velocity.